Secret. Hi guys, my name is Miller and welcome back to another video. Today I will talk about the latest flash event that started today and the new fastest car in CSR 2, the Hennessy Venom F5 concept. I will first tell some more about the car and the event and then I'll discuss its difficulty, which to me seems to be challenging but by no means impossible, followed by a max tune for the car which got me to run a 6.932, confirming this will be the fastest car in the game. And to close off my thoughts on the car and why I think you should get it if you're looking into buying a car. So let's get into it. The Venom F5 concept is a crazy car. The first mentions came out in 2016 and then a first mock-up was unveiled at SEMA in 2017. And ever since it was rumored to be that one monster to hit the magic 300 miles per hour barrier as a production hypercar. However, as it is still in its concept phase and still being developed, it kind of missed the boat with Bugatti beating them to that mark, although Bugatti never set an official record. But in the meantime, Hennessy did get their name out there and they gained some popularity along the way. The car is now further developed in the UK, with some initial specs already revealed, rumored to produce 1,817 horsepower on a curb weight of only 1,338 kilograms. This seems a little bit too good to be true to be honest. That is a 1.36 power to weight ratio, which is a bit unrealistic for a car that is not particularly focused on acceleration, but on top speed. Of course, as it is still in a concept phase and there is no rolling car really, numbers are completely speculative and we have to base onto sources by Hennessy themselves. The car itself is great looking though. I also like the fact that this is the first fully in-house built designed Hennessy and not really based on a different car like with the Lotus for the Venom GT or the Viper for the 650R. It is truly something new. But I really hope that this year is the year that the car will actually come out and we don't have to wait another year and being based on the statistics provided by them. We want to see it in real life. I was lucky enough to get to see this car with my own eyes at Pebble Beach in 2018, but it's just so futuristic. But on the other hand, still a car of today that you could imagine driving on the streets without thinking like, what even is that? In game, there isn't really an interaction or any animations with the car. This is something that I've got lots of messages for today of people being a little bit disappointed in it, but this is mainly due to the fact that it's still in its concept phase, indicating that, like the Voiture Noire, there is no definitive interior yet or a fully working engine bay. Therefore, everything is still sealed off and you can't see on the inside. If you were to go into AR, you would see that the inside is just black slash dark gray panels. If you want to get your hands on a car in game for yourselves, you can buy it now for hard cash. You can select again between three bundles, but unless you're fully new to the game, I don't think you will need those 20 uncommon parts, as you will have some Hennessy parts laying around anyways. So therefore, I will advise you guys to check the cheapest bundle on the left. As for the event, it is a fully fledged flash event, a 30 races long rundown with the total rewards of 900,000 cash, 775 gold, 280 bronze keys, 100 silver and 10 gold keys. And to get those gold keys, you will get 14 uncommons, 8 rare and 3 epic fusion parts to assist you, and 2 stage 6 parts, which can be one running fully fused stage 5. The first one on race 25, when you will have to beat a time of a 9.752. And then on race 28, where you have to beat a time of a 9.143. Later the tune that I use to win those races easily. In terms of difficulty, I have to say this event is quite doable. And this is mainly thanks to the fact that the F5 is a bit like the Yesco in terms of game performance and in terms of upgradability. On stage 5, fully fused, it runs an 8.3. And the fusion parts are not that hard to get, with some of us already having a nice stash laying around if you have been playing for some time, which then makes the event also a lot more doable compared to a new manufacturer flash event like the Totara for example, where you have to buy plenty of crates just to get 30 fusion parts. With this stage 5 tune, I got to the final race and let's see if it can do it.
And the answer is no. I'm almost half a second too slow, which is again quite a big jump in difficulty. But not impossible to beat in such a way that it will require you to invest immediately heavily into crates, like we had with some flash events in the past. So what I did is I installed the two stage 6 paths that I won, and luckily I won two different ones, which will ease up the process a bit. With these two I had a reasonably big margin to beat the final race with. In case 2 is not enough in your situation, the event runs a full 8 days, and you get a free crate every 24 hours with the 7 loyalty. So you should get at least another free stage 6 part which should not be a duplicate. And with some luck along the way during those full 8 days, you get another one through crates. So you might as well end up with 4 instead of 2. But with 2, it should be enough to complete the event if you have the right 2, maybe 3 if you get a terrible combination. This is the tune that I ran using the two stage 6 parts that I won and then the final race. Overall, it is an okay event and I really liked it. It can be put up there in terms of difficulty level, just like the Senna. A bit easier compared to the Lamborghini Sian, but a bit harder compared to the Koenigsegg Jesko. But by no means a money pit, where additional crates are a must to be able to complete the event, which is for me a perfect balance. If you want to buy one car ever in the game, this is definitely a great option to go for. I personally would go for this one. The pattern is also doable, my best time so far has been a 6.932, sadly I was not recording at the time that I hit this time so you guys will have to believe me of this screenshot. I was not able to duplicate the same time on tape, you guys will have to deal with a slightly slightly slower time, but it can be said that it's quite consistent. It is a car many will use online from now on because it's not only the fastest, it's also rather consistent and also good looking. Here's a tune. And I'm my best run with it. Now conclusion, is it worth it? For me it's a yes. It's the new fastest car, it's upgradable without requiring a crazy number of crates and a fun car overall even on stage 5. It's a car the buyer will have no regret buying and that is what I think makes it even more worth it, gives it more value. What we also see is if we go back to see which car was the fastest at which point, first we had the LaFerrari, that was since the launch of the game basically, which got dethroned by the GTX when paid events started to rise up. This one held the crown for actually a long time until it got beaten by the Javelin and shortly after by the Brabham BT62, with then the SSC Tuatara crushing everything and becoming the fastest car by a, quite a big margin. What did those four cars have in common? They were all new manufacturers, which meant that multiple crates were required to get them to maximum potential. Now we see the likes of the Chiron Supersport 300 and Hennessy Venom F5 concept as well up there in the top 5, which are cars which are easier to upgrade because parts are more common. So this is actually a great time for players which don't mind spending once, but not a full 100 plus to get a car to max performance. So I'm quite satisfied all in all with the event and also the price and the fact that this car becomes available. Let me know down below what you think about this. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, 
My name's Miller. See you around and keep racing.